Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is as good as it possibly can be. I've got an idea actually. The other day we had Elvis walking around like we do all the time. Of course, he's uh, he's always happy to come out and stuff like that. But he actually saw a tub of roaches and he was really interested in it. So I thought to myself, let's go ahead and give him a little bit of enrichment, right? We've got crocodile chow here, which he likes to find every now and then. We've got roaches and then we got some frozen mice. I'm gonna just go ahead, let Elvis out and see what he wants to eat today and just give him a little mental enrichment, right? He'll just give his brain something to think about a little bit and he's gonna wanna see what's going on, but I'm excited to see like which one will he want, right? Come on, Elvis, let's go, buddy. You can see he's already kind of curious to what's happening. He's coming over here, he sees, he's smelling. That long tongue, of course, is great. They've got that you know, ability to smell long distances. So he's just kind of uh, seeing what's going on and when he decides to come out, I have a feeling he's gonna come over here. You can see him, he's so curious. He's already like, wait a second, I see something, I smell something. What is going on? So what's he gonna take? Is it gonna be the roaches, the mice, the crocodile chow? Look at he's coming right over. Look at how curious he is. See, he's smelling that, that, he's smelling that. And is he gonna come over to the mice? What's he thinking? Oh, I think he likes the mice. Oh yeah, for sure. Ah, there he goes. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. He walked right by the crocodile chow, right by the roaches, went right to the mice. So we'll see once he finishes the mice, is he going to then go on to the roaches? Or is he just going to give it up? I don't know what he's going to do. Maybe he'll eat all of it. I don't know. That was absolutely pretty cool. So let's see what he's going to do now. Look at he's looking at the roaches now. Now he's looking at the roaches. He's real curious about what they are. If the roaches would move around, I think he would really be interested in it. There he goes. Oh yeah, he's interested. Oh, oh, don't let him out, Elvis. There he got one, he got a roach. Yes. There he goes. Oh, he got another, he's got <laughs> This is cool, and again, this is just giving his brain things to think about, right? This mental enrichment. This is just so absolutely amazing. Now he's gonna smell over here. See if he wants some of this. Oh my gosh, this is so freaking awesome. Oh my God. I love it. This is definitely a good way to start the day again. He's just gonna take a little bit of a treat of everything. He's got his crocodile chow now. He's eating some roaches. He's obviously eating the other thing. This is, again, this is just really great for him. He's, you know, again, gives him opportunity to think different things and use that brain, that smart brain that he has. So, wow. <laughs> All right, so I guess he likes mice first, roaches second, and then he figures what the heck, I might as well eat the crocodile chow. So uh, I hope that that was a good way to start our day. Let's just jump into the rest of it. All right, guys, so it begins. I could not be more excited right now. And that's because we have our first clutch of snake eggs for the year. Well, theoretically, we had the mangroves, but this is for this breeding season. So I am so excited. Of course, this is a Stimson's python. This is an Antracia, which is a dwarf python from Australia. Looks like she's got one egg out of the box right now. We'll go ahead and candle that egg, and uh, I'll talk about why we're candling eggs. We've talked about it in the past, but for those of you that have joined us, don't know why candle eggs, you will find out. And then I'm gonna just slowly unwind her, and oh my gosh, that is a gorgeous clutch. And of course, she's kind of protecting those eggs right now, like a good mom python will do. With colubrids and stuff like that, they lay their eggs and they just leave them, but pythons actually do protect their eggs, uh, and they'll stay on them for the majority of the time until they actually hatch, but we actually artificially incubate. So let's just go ahead and take a look really quick how many eggs these are right here. There is two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 eggs. Whoo, doggy. I tell you what, mama, you did so good. And she looks really good too. Stimson's pythons are so absolutely incredible. Uh, but guess what, guys? This isn't the only clutch of eggs for the day. So what I was talking about with the candling is I'll just take a light, like an iPhone light or a flashlight, whatever, and I'm looking for the embryo because we want the embryo to be on the top. Now, snake eggs actually will kind of adhere to the top with a little air sac or a little air bubble so they can breathe. Oftentimes, if they're on the opposite side, they'll drown. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead and shut the lights off and look for the embryo. And you can see as I illuminate the snake egg, you can see that little red network of veins right there, right? And right in the center, right there, I can see the air air sac and the embryo itself. So this is the way you want to keep it up, right there. Whenever a snake egg is pushed out of the mound, I'll always candle it. 
And of course, just on the actual egg box itself, I'm writing the clutch number, which would be one, the Stimson's Python, which would be number one female that laid. I'm gonna write the date that they're laid so that I can have an idea of when they're gonna hatch. And I'm gonna write the amount of eggs that are in the clutch. That way I can kind of follow the whole cycle, right? From the female to hatching, and then when my data book, when we hatch, we know which females it's from, we know how many hatch out of the clutch, all that type of stuff. I tell you what, guys, finally a gorgeous day here in Michigan. The weather's about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Blue skies, not a cloud in the sky. I needed a day like today, and and you know, you can still go outside, guys, even if you're inside. You can go out, just, it'll make you feel better if it's nice out. Just take a deep breath, kind of soak it in. As a matter of fact, tonight, Laurie said we're gonna put our patio furniture out in the backyard by the pond, and, and even though the pond needs a lot of work to be done, to say the least, there's as nasty as could be. My buddy Dan Put hopefully will come out and help me out with that, but uh, uh, just being outside, it, it just makes you feel so much better. What is it? Go get the ball. Fetch. Are you trying to teach her how to play fetch, dude? I might be. I might be. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm sort of trying to push the limits a little bit here, but. Uh, well, it was cool. I was over at the new Reptarium and I seen her playing with this little tubey. Yeah, and, and, and you had you had said something about a dog just to make a joke. It took the, they took the, the piece of paper towel and sort of threw it like that. And look at it. It's a new game. You away from the monitor without getting your feet bit. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, you got it. Okay, oh, she right, got right. it. Let's not eat that, though. Let's not eat that, though. Elvis has literally been here for like a half hour just eating this crocodile chow kibble. And again, that means he's mentally engaged the entire time, which is just awesome. I mean, it's just cool because uh, it's something that just continues to keep him kind of alert. You know, the more alert, the more happy he is. The more mentally enriched he is, the better the animal. You get a lot of food, bud? You did good today, huh, buddy boy? You did good today, buddy. Good job, bud. Way to go, sweetheart. And we have another clutch of eggs. That's right, but this one, of course, is a children's python. With the ant tracer, there's children's spotted and Stimson's pythons. There's also anthill pythons that I don't work with. And we have another clutch of eggs right here. Oh my gosh, that looks good. And again, you see the children's, they don't have as much pattern, right? The pattern is kind of washed out, but they're a very similar looking animal. And I'm just gonna, with one hand here, slowly try to unwind my girl here. You did so good, mama. I tell you what, what a beautiful couple clutches of eggs to start the season. Hopefully that's a prelude to what the season's gonna be like. And you can see there's a couple eggs that are dancing dangling here, one egg that's out of the clutch altogether, and then two eggs here that's kind of getting rolled around. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and candle these three eggs here. Now take the rest of these eggs out here, and we'll count them up. Oh, looks like we got a fourth egg that I'm gonna go ahead and candle just for the heck of it. This one's just a little desiccated, which means it's just kind of dented in. We'll hopefully be able to rehydrate that egg, but this has two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 eggs. Oh man, I tell you what, Mama, you did so good. And again, she looks good as well. So we'll get her all cleaned up, ready to go. So uh, 18 eggs from a children's python, 14 from a Simpsons python. 2020 python egg season is officially here. I'm kind of curious about something. My girl Cupcake here, the boa constrictor, I wonder if the fact that she only ate one rat yesterday, and for those of you guys that didn't see, Noah actually fed the collection, and uh, she was one of the animals that we fed. And you know, she's a big snake, and she started to eat over here at the Reptarium, but yesterday she took her first rat, just look at how big she is, but she didn't take a second rat. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is there's a chance that she could be grabbing or pregnant, right? And the reason for that is, is we did have a sun glow sharp albino male in with her for a while and we saw some breeding. Now she looks pretty fat back here. You can kind of see how swollen she is and there's a chance that she actually could have babies in there. I might try to ultrasound here in the next couple days, bring it over and see what's gonna happen with her and see if we see any babies or follicles in there because unlike pythons that go completely off food when they're gravid, boa constrictors, believe it or not, will still sometimes eat small meals right up until about a month before they have their babies. Then they typically go off 
off of food. So I'm not sure. There's a chance that Cupcake could have babies. And with the size she is, I'd be willing to bet she'd have like 50 plus babies. So fingers crossed she actually is. That would be so cool. So again, uh, maybe in the next couple days we'll drag the ultrasound over here and scan her and see if there's any babies inside there. So we have a bunch of geckos hatched today? Yeah. Well, these two were hatched out today, but over the weekend we had like four other ones hatched out. Oh my God, a bunch. Are they all the same type of gecko? Or is yeah, these are Chinese, yep, Chinese? all Chinese cave geckos. Okay, cool. uh, we only had one pair last year, but okay. now we have three females and one male breeding. Oh my gosh. Days, so, so what you're saying is we're probably going to have a lot of babies and we should probably maybe sell some. Yes. Okay. So yeah. all of them. We're not keeping any this time. <laughs> all, right, so all right. So these guys will be on the website as soon as they start eating. Uh, we've been just, every time we hatch geckos, we just keep them all. I don't know what we're thinking, but I guess this year we'll actually have some Chinese cave geckos for sale. Take a look at guys. Uh, Ivy is all the way in the back over there on land. I tell you, this snake, uh, every time I think I've got her figured out, she, she throws me for a loop. Obviously, she spent all that time in the water. She shed out. She even after she shed on the land, she went back in the water. And then this morning I came in and uh, now she's just hanging out back there. I have a feeling she wants to get fed. So in the next day or two, we'll thaw something out and feed this little monkey. I keep mentioning, you know, how to keep yourself kind of occupied in these times, you know, come up with ideas. You know, if you're a business, think of ways you can actually still generate some income. Uh, also keep yourself going. There's opportunities out there. You know, whether it's a hobby or potentially, you know, if you're laid off right now and you're thinking, how can I make a little extra money? You know, just keep your mind going and you never know what's going to happen. So as you guys know, I'm an idea guy. So I'm always coming up with ideas that I can kind of not only generate some income to keep the bills going, at least the best we can. I've told you guys, we're going to be in a deficit here no matter what, but we're going to be okay. Never, never complaining. Don't worry about us. Worry about you guys. With that being said, uh, we do stuff like, you know, there's an app called Cameo where we do these kind of shout outs to people. So I thought, why don't we do our own just for this period of time. It'd be, you'd be cheap, like 10 bucks, 12 bucks, something like that. And you can actually go to the reptarium.com and for, like I said, you know, 10, 12 bucks, whatever we end up making it, uh, you can have a, a shout out by Perdita or you can have a shout out by Beetlejuice or any animal or any of the crew. So if you, uh, you support Bruce and Jessica, you can have Jessica actually send you a video or send someone else that maybe needs cheering up a video, whether it's me, Lori, Noah, anyone in the crew. And if you do the crew, I'm actually going to give them a cut of it so that they can generate a little bit more money too and again make it personalized so in there you can tell us what it is is it your birthday that someone just needs some cheering up whatever the case may be whether you want to do it with the crew you want to do it with an animal whatever it is so uh, I don't let me know if you guys like the idea I'll probably just try it at least again reptarium.com you can go there and uh, book the kind of uh, personal message to you we'll email you or text whatever you prefer you know a minute minute and a half two minute long personalized message that you guys want. So if you guys think it's a good idea, let me know and uh, we'll give it a shot. All right, back to unboxing some stuff for you guys. Like I said, we'll try to do this like, you know, every day, every other day and just see, uh, cause we have so much stuff Get right the now. Backlog. Yeah, we have a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's just been so busy and kind of insane. From uh, N -E -X. NEX. NEX, okay, what do we have here? Oh, it's a little sloth. <laughs> it's a oh, pooping sloth. It's a sloth pooper. I like that, what's a no say? Oh my gosh, what's a no say? Tell Lori that the internet has a fever and the only cure is more sloth. I don't think that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we have? Ooh, this is actually nice. It's not a sloth, Lori, so you should be happy. It's actually a beautiful shirt right there. It's hey, a green tree it's like, Yeah, it's like their new yeah, one. Yeah. Kind of. It's nice. See how it kind of like, well, yeah, it like pickles yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so that's awesome. Well, yeah. thank you. I don't know who sent that, but thank you so much. Uh, Want to open this one? All right, here we go. Oh! <laughs> this is a weird, what, what is it though? Oh, I know what it is. I what know, is? but it's uh, one different. Guess. Because, it's different because it's, it's a new one. It's something I haven't we had. Haven't oh, it's seen a little before. basket. <laughs> Oh my gosh, and take it's, a look at this. It's your Easter basket. It's an Easter basket and some sloth PJs. Oh, shut the hell oh, up. Oh my gosh. You're going to wear those tonight. Well, this one I think is for you. No, Lord, no, I'm pretty sure they're for yeah. you. They're sloths. Lori, that's a, that's a girl it's, shirt. But you're going to wear it. No, I'm not wearing yes, a girl are. shirt. But thank you. What I is love watching the vlog. Brian, the PJs are for you. Okay, they're for, they said they're for you. They said they're for Lori. So this is uh, this is my happy face. That's a cool shirt too. I like that. Do you see that? 
<laughs> oh my god, that is funny. I haven't seen that one either. I know, I haven't seen it. So that's it cool. I like that. Funny. And you guys are getting right. You're, everyone's sending me large shirts, which I appreciate <laughs> that. So you'll definitely see those those guys on the blog. Here is another shirt. This looks like it's international from the oh, okay. postage. Yeah, it looks like it's international. Uh, oh gosh, what is this? Thing? Let's see what we got. Awesome. Darth Vader. Oh, with the yeah, it's got the Death Star. Stars, got uh, all that stuff. So that's awesome. Well, uh, thank you. Is it got a note? Well, thank you whoever sent me that. I'm a huge Star Wars guy. As a matter of fact, I just watched Solo again the other night. Yeah. We watched the newest Star, Star Wars just a couple days ago. So we have a whole bunch of stuff. So we'll just open these from time to time. But uh, that's awesome. You guys rock. It is so exciting that we're starting to get snake eggs again. I mean, the season has begun. It's going to be absolutely a banger of a year. I hope that you enjoyed today. And if you enjoyed eggs, here's an entire playlist of egg stuff that you guys can watch right through. And we also have a podcast called Checking It. You can subscribe to it right over here. On this side, you can subscribe to the vlog channel if you don't mind. Please turn your post notifications on on everything. Have the best day you possibly can. Remember to be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.